Hello everybody, my name is Bliatrapdor and I welcome you to new World of Tanks Super Test Preview video. Today we have a look at Scorpion G but Russian so making it better in 100 or in 90% of every single stat. Obviously because Russian tank in a Russian game, Zuka Bliat. No, we are not going to make a whole video with that dumb accent I once used in Object 268 version 4 video. But today we'll definitely have a look at the Russian Scorpion G, if you want to call it like that. Or at least a pretty darn close relative to the Scorpion G. The SU-130PM Tier 8 Premium Russian Tank Destroyer, which, well, came yesterday to the super test, but I didn't have time to make the video yesterday, so I'm sorry for that, guys. So... I made already so many jokes about the Scorpion G. I already said that probably how to, <laughs> as it's called, how to power creep the Scorpion G. So I guess it is a be the best idea would be to have a look and compare the current stats in the super test with the Scorpion G right here, right now. I do want to point out one thing, guys. Right now, I might be a little bit biased and you... I have a little bit displeased about the SU-130 PM compared to the Scorpion G. I do have to note though, those are super test stats, so they can change. But, and here comes the big but, right now, and you will see it later on, the SU-130 PM is in around 80 to 90% of the stats, of the different stats, better than the Scorpion G. So that is a big, 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 big no-no if you think about it that the Scorpion G already is a pretty darn strong tank. How exactly can this happen that a strong tank basically gets a version which is in 90% of the different stats better? And I know this is super test, but still, how tremendously can they already screw that over in that early of a stage? They could easily look at the Scorpion G and try to balance it around the Scorpion G because it is a pretty darn good foothold i would say but yeah i'm also going to start world of tanks in general just for a later pur for the later purpose of the video so i hope that starts well in the background while we now have a look finally at the stats no it had to interrupt us one more time as already said it's a tier 8 russian premium tank destroyer and it has 1100 hit points so here it is one of the rare occasions where the scorpion g has not the upper hand with 50 hit points more. Those 50 hit points can sometimes really define death or li life or living. So it might be a little plus for the Scorpion G. Next up, we have an engine of 400 horsepower, a weight of 24 tons, and this gives us a power to weight ratio of 16. 0.67. Once again, the Scorpion G is in that note better, but it is only by an inch, or at least by a pretty close margin. To be precise, 33, 0.33 HP per ton ratio, he is better. And this is quite the small difference, in my opinion. And you won't really feel big differences when you have those tanks side by side in an acceleration game. Yes, Scorpion G will um accelerate faster but marginal really marginal here comes one big plus though this su 130 pm now is the tank with five kilometers per hour more top speed and as already said this is also a marginal small difference but don't forget the object 140 drives at 55 kilometers per hour where the t62a only drives at 50 and um, those five kilometers per hour can in certain or in quite certain many cases mean that you can't take a really good position with the T62A because you're simply too slow. Next up we have a hull traverse speed of 36 degrees which is once again better than the Scorpion G's 31.29 and we have a turret turning speed or let's call it like that a gun mount speed of 22.9 degrees per second. And that is most certainly also better than the 18.77 degrees per second of the Scorpion G. Or if things finally loaded, well, that's fantastic. Next up are the terrain resistance values. The values which are there to balance the soft sets of a tank. How well does it accelerate, even though power to weight ratio is one of those. 
um, parameters, but also how well does it turn on hard, medium, soft grounds, hard being something like concrete, so medium being something like grass, and soft being, well, swamp or things like the valley in Lakewell. And those values are 100% the same. 1.151, which is rounded up to 1.15, 1.438, which is rounded up to 1.44, and 2.877, which is rounded up to 288, uh, excuse me, 2877 to 288. The fuel range is also exactly the same, meaning you can most notably have no issues using the binoculars telescope to get the 450 meters of base fuel range. Well, afterwards, there we have it already. That's pretty good. Well, that's it for the general stats. And you can see, even though we have slight disadvantages when it comes to HP and power to weight ratio, in all the other cases, we are either equal to the Scorpion G or even better than a Scorpion G. So yeah, there is that for you guys, <laughs> just as a small little disclaimer. I don't want to go into the armor that much. The Scorpion G definitely has the upper hand, but well, sorry, but 30 millimeters of armor won't win a prize. Same does 20 millimeters of armor. The only remarkable feature the Scorpion G has is that he can in theory, bounce guns up to 90 millimeters caliber or up to end. Or, yeah, just with 90 millimeters of caliber. Because in a steep, steep angle, he is able to auto bounce those shells. But as soon as they're above 90 millimeters, that won't work anymore. For our SU 130 pm, this will be, or this threshold is just. 60 millimeters and let's be honest everything i think almost everything above or above and tier 6 included has at least a 60 millimeter gun maybe scouts not maybe but that still shouldn't pose a big tr problem when we look at the tank from the side this shouldn't exceed those uh, out of bounds angles but yeah we'll see now comes the big and most important part for a tank destroyer, and this is the gun. It's a 130mm M65S gun, and I think at the moment we don't really have a tank which is or which has the same caliber or same gun, same caliber we do have um, with the i7 and uh, Object 277 and WZ150, I think. Okay, it is a clone of the um, Object 277's gun. But it is a hell of a different when it comes to stats for some reason. Well then, let's have a look. Not only does this gun is a Russian gun, no, it has also has 520 alpha damage. What does that mean? This is 30 alpha damage more than a Scorpion G poses. That's quite... it's not a big difference. But it is a difference nevertheless. And this difference can sometimes make a change. Seriously, those 520 damage I calculated yesterday, and we can do it the same here. We can try to find a decent amount of RNG. Usually, you have a spread between 25 plus and 25 minus of your middle alpha damage, which we have here, 520. So we can say 520 times 0 point, nah, 0 0.25, which is 25%. We have 130, so just gun can roll either 130 more damage or 130 less. But again, those are the highest possible values. So in theory, which you will most likely never really find, is this gun could theoretically roll to 650 damage. But again, this is just theory and this won't ever happen. It's or in such low cases, this will happen. On the other hand, let's take value for example 10% RNG which I think is more common to get so again we have the 520 alpha damage times 0 point not 41 0 point 0.1 gives us 52 extra damage times 520 means that if we roll above or if we have 10% RNG plus we have 572 damage or do damage with that 
And that's a reasonable value you can roll, 10% more. You can also roll 10% less, obviously. But this is almost enough to one-shot certain tier eight, uh, tier six TDs and tier six scouts. Which a Scorpion G can do as well, but not that often. Again, we can also make the same experiment with the Scorpion G and we'll get 539. Which, as you probably see or saw compared to the other ones, it's quite, it's a difference. It's a marginal difference, but this difference can make or can make and change a game. When you, for example, one shot a scout while with the Scorpion G, you don't one shot a scout. Also to that, the SU-130M obviously control that low as the Scorpion G does. Next up we have 243 millimeters of AP penetration, which is 3 millimeters of penetration less, which is, let's be honest, not a big deal. But it has 320 millimeters of heat penetration as Prima shells versus the 311 APCR, meaning, well, obviously the shells will fly slower than the gold shells of the Scorpion G. And in certain cases can be worse, but those shells won't lose any penetration over distance, while the Scorpion G can lose quite a lot because those are APCR shells, or PS and composite rich shells, and through game logic they lose quite a lot of penetration over distance during drag. HG penetration is the same, while the HG damage is 30 more, same with, it was like with the AP shells and heat shells. Next up is the rate of fire, which is 5.006 rounds per minute. And Wargaming, you're kidding me, right? He has 30 damage more, alpha damage, but has a better, legit, a better rate of fire? Yes, this tank has almost 200 dam damage per minute more, as you can see, 2603 versus 2409. Both tanks having no brothers in arms, just a 100% crew. The reload time is yeah, 0 0.21 seconds faster on the SU-130M compared to the Scorpion G. The accuracy with 0 0.336 is still fairly accurate. Yes, the Scorpion G is more accurate, in theory, <laughs> with 0 0.29, but this is such a small difference that you won't really feel the difference, especially in this game where accuracy is not really the most important stats in general. The aim time is 2.21 seconds. Once again, the Scorpion G has a slight edge over here with 2.01 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds faster aim time. But we have 7 degrees of gun depression and 37 degrees of gun elevation. Plus, this tank also has somewhat like a turret. It's just a gun mount and it can't turn it 360 degrees like the Scorpion G does. So the Scorpion G definitely gets that going for him, for having this full rotatable turret. But don't forget, those are 77.5 degrees to each side. I don't want to make you feel too biased about it. Let's get... Uh, yeah, 70 75% is more mm, is accurate enough for me. So this to this round, if you can imagine, this is the arc the SU-130P um, can shoot at. I still think this is quite a big arc to, sh to begin with, and it's totally okay for a TD, in my opinion. Having a turret is obviously awesome because you can do strats like this and then immediately go away and run away. But nevertheless, those 77% or 70, excuse me, 77 degrees, there we go. Now we got it almost accurate to the point. Um, this is more than enough for a TD if you're used to play TDs. 70 degrees of gun depression, we obviously don't know if it is the same problem with the Scorpion G where it only has it over the sides. But... Um, to be honest, when I look at this tank like this with this uh, uh, with the form of the tank going so low or down like this, I think this tank will also have around 7 degrees even on the front, which makes it even more wonky in my opinion. So yeah, we basically have a tank which is a most stats better than the Scorpion G, even faster, better DPM, more punishing gun, better premium shells. 
less accuracy and less aim time. Wow. But oh wait, there is more. How about accuracy after shooting? That's the same, but let's be honest, that's not really important after shooting. During the rotation of your turret, 0 0.3134, oh look at that, it's more accurate than the Scorpion G. While the vehicle, I vehicle is in motion, look at that, it's more accurate than the Scorpion G. During turret traverse, uh, excuse me, tank traver traverse, more accurate than the Scorpion G. Do you see the pattern? I guess you do, because again, the Scorpion G <laughs> kind of gets the short one here. Again, it's a loser in the stats, but now guys, now comes the big and final conclusion. We here got camouflage values for those tanks, or for this tank in particular. And this, or those values are, again, as I said, most likely without a crew. And again, as far as I know, I calculated it correctly, those stats are in percent, meaning that, for example, if an enemy tank has 445 meters of fuel range, exactly 445 meters of fuel range, you are going to multiply those percent values, 0 0.335, for 33.5%, meaning you get 149 meters. Meaning, right now you have 445 meters minus 149 meters, comma 175, I think it was. And this tank, in theory, what I calculated, should keep it get spotted at around 296 meters on open space. Without any crew, without any camouflage net, without crew skills, without present arms, without, um, I don't know what, food ratios. That's a lot. Especially a lot when we are going to compare it, as already I mentioned, with the Scorpion G. You might think, oh wait, but the Scorpion G has still 21.96%, right? No. This is with Brothers in Arms, Camouflage, and Chocolate. And we could even, no, we can't remove um, Camo. <laughs> Those are the stock values of the Scorpion G. 13.29%. Almost a third less. We can even, maybe we can give you another hint at how stealthy this tank is. We can try to compare it with the E25, which is probably one of the most stealthiest tank, not selfish, stealthiest tank in the game. Now I just need to find it. Um, there we go. And this <laughs> and the E25, I don't know what the current crew is. I'm just going to put a 100% crew in it. Even... The E25 has, when he is stationary and when he's moving, let's have the stats here again, worse camouflage than SU-130 PM. Just get that for a minute. Wargaming themselves said the E25 is game-breaking. But they're going to introduce, or right now have in the super test, a tank with better camouflage values while stationary and while moving. Not while shooting, that's a whole other story. It's half. Uh, it's half of it, as you can see, ten to five percent. But still, that's a huge difference. Like this tank is four percent more stealthy than the SU one hundred thirty PM. Again, guys, I know I might be a little bit biased. Those are super test stats, but again, I do not comprehend. This tank will be nerfed. I'm like. 100% certain, because as already said, this is in like 90% of the cases better than the Scorpion G, except for the turret, except for accuracy, except for aim time. Two stats of them are, well, marginal, worse, and well, the turret is a big plus when you have it. <laughs> but again, you have 140 degrees in total of gun arc, that's a lot. It is the perfect crew trainer because the crew layout is, we saw it here, commander, driver, gunner, and two loaders. This is the same crew layout, depending if the commander is also the loader, as of the, uh, excuse me, uh, um, the radio operator, as of the Object 268 version 4, as you can see here. We have a gunner, which is currently my SU-100U. We have the commander with the second specialization of being the radio operator, a driver, and two loaders. As you can see, same layout. And the same goes for the Object 268 standard version. 
We can even have a look if it is the same for the, SU, uh, for the object s two, um, 704, and it is. So in total, it's a pretty darn good crew trainer, even. <sighs> I, I talked 20 minutes about this tank now. I know they have to nerve it, in my opinion, otherwise this tank will be completely broken, in my opinion. I wouldn't say I wouldn't like the tank to play. Like, I would love to play this tank, but it can... It legit will destroy tier 8. At least, at least one big plus is that this tank will have a good fight against your 10 tanks. That's the only plus, but it will wreck tier, nine, um, tier 8 and below. That's it. <laughs> That's what I think about this tank. Especially tankers with good skills, which can utilize bushes really well. Utilize um, foliage very well with 50 meter U rule and so on and so forth. Will wreck havoc in this tank in mediocrely to open mapped or open fielded maps thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you all later